All right, we got the transaxle out. It was pretty easy. I took the chains loose and I loosened the three nuts on these outer bearings and they slid out. I soaked it in that uh, good GM lube. Came off that side and that side. And now I'm gonna pass the phone over to my son here. We're gonna drain, come up under here. We're gonna drain this thing if we can get this loose. And I got a feeling this is going to be pretty oily, I mean, uh, oily, milky. Oh, it's not bad. It's going to be milky. And the reason I suspect that is this thing set outside. So, let's see what we got here. <laughs> How about water? Oh, my. Oh, and that stinks. Oh, look at that. It was pure water initially. And then it looks like, almost smells like gear oil. You guys, you uh, struck guys, do you know what this thing runs? The uh, Sears runs a non-detergent 30 weight. That is a magnetic end on that, I believe. And it's got all kind of crud on it. So, this thing is going to definitely need a good, good flushing. I hope when I get into it, there's no major damage. Everything seemed to work smoothly, so maybe it just needs good maintenance, but we're going to find out. All right, I'll let that sit there for a little bit, and not a whole lot came out. Uh, there was some clear water at the beginning. A little bit of that is uh, carb cleaner. I didn't have any brake clean. So I sprayed a little carb cleaner in it. It ran straight through. Uh, when I crack into it, I'm going to clean it out real good. Uh, it's not a whole lot of it. I don't know how much it holds. And I don't know what it type it is. It smells like uh, gear oil. Uh, like I said, Sears runs a 30 weight. This, it's, it seems like gear oil. Whatever it is, is, is rust. So no telling what I'll get into when I get inside this thing. All right, I kind of forgot to do some videoing. I got it cracked open, and other than you know, rusty gear oil, some little bit of metal shavings in there, nothing bad. I uh, don't see anything major. Everything looks pretty good, I think. Uh, you can see the effects of that thing sitting out in the weather. Here's this half. Again, just nastiness. I'm going to clean this out real good. Flush it. There's my input shaft. I'm going to reach on the other side here. See if I can find it there. You can see it moving. So I'm assuming that bearing is bad. And I'm going to inspect all, inspect all of the bearings and all of the points to it. Springs, somebody mentioned detent springs. I'm going to go through all this, replace everything that's even partially suspect that I can get my hands on anyway. So this is uh, what it looks like inside of a transaxle that's set out in the weather. All right, got the input shaft out, and it's got some shiny places on it. It don't feel too bad needs to be cleaned up real good. There's the oil seal, and I had to destroy it a little bit getting it out. Um, hopefully I can match that up at my parts store or tractor supply or somewhere. Uh, three quarters inch shaft, so it's three quarters inner diameter and an inch and five eighths outer diameter. Uh, you could tell that it was oblong. You could tell where that shaft was wearing on it. Over here in the case, I got to get some brake clean. I'm out. But you can see right there, one of the balls is missing. And I've got to see what I got to do to get this bearing out and see if I can match it up. I'll take those dimensions and see if I can find something before I tear into it. And then I can, I can destroy it if I found one that will fit. And then there's needle bearings on down inside there. 
And upon initial inspection, they seem pretty good. I think all of the pressure was on this. And it just, after years, gave way. All right, I got the bearing and the seal out. And that inner inner bearing, the needle bearing, looks good. And there's the inner needle bearing on that, and it looks good. All right, clean this thing out and clean and clean and clean. And I got most of the rust out. You see a little bit there in the opening of where the shifter goes. Uh, it's pretty clean. I'm happy with it. I cleaned all the needle bearings that are there. And I've got the shaft here. I cleaned the shaft up. I've got new roller bearing. And it looks like it's going to fit. That's from McMaster Car. And I got a new seal from, I deal with CarQuest here locally. And uh, they match the seal up. There's the part number on it if you need that. Um, and I got some RTV gasket, uh, gear oil gasket maker. About 11 bucks for that stuff. And I'll redo around this and the top, all the seals. Getting ready to go back together with this thing. I got to clean the other half. Okay. I've got the bearing started. It's going down in there. It's It fits perfect. And what I'm doing is just tapping it very slightly as I move the punch around. I don't want to get it cross-eyed or anything. And we'll get it down to where it seats. You want to be careful here. It's a good fit. I mean, it's perfect. And you heard the sound change. And I know it's seated. And... Next, we'll do the seal. And again, what I want to do is just test this. I got the shaft in here. I was testing it here. And it's going to be... Oh, perfect. 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 So what I want to do is, again, uh, square this up as best I can on top of it and just gently... Go around. Yep, don't want to do that. You just got to work these in. You want a good tight fit on these. So that's, oh yeah, there she goes. And just tap. Now you can, they make us a, a seal installer kit. I've never bought one. You can get a socket that's just slightly smaller. You want it to rest on the outer edge of that. You don't want it to be too small. You don't want it to be too big either. Uh, and work out till it's down flush. That outer seal cost me, I think it was $10. The roller bearing through McMaster Car was shipping. Shipping was more than the bearing was. The bearing was seven ninety two. I think shipping was eight something, and then some tax. Uh, but I'm going to have a non wobbling input shaft. All right, here's where I am on this. I'm test fitting this back down. And I figured this was going to be a little of a challenge to get it to go back together. And I went back and read the uh, manual on the transaxle. And what they recommended is when you get it wiggled back down into place, it'd be about a half inch up. Take and turn your input shaft and it should drop down to about a quarter inch, which it dropped down. Maybe just a little more than a quarter, but anyway, it dropped down. And then they said, take a pair of needle nose in there and wiggle the shift forks around and it should drop on down. So I'm going to try that. Uh, I, I can't do that. Uh, hold the camera and do that. So I'm going to try that and see if it is. I'm going to take it back off and hope I can do it a second time. And I'm going to put that, R, uh, that RTV, that uh, sealant on there. Uh, I don't want this thing leaking. I don't want to have to take this thing back out. So... Uh, that's my next step is to see if I can get it together and then I'll take it apart and put it together for real and get everything back together. I'm going to clean the outside up. 
I've debated whether to paint this thing or not, and I probably am not. We'll see. All right, so that's what I tried. And you can see it is all the way together. And it would be real tempting to uh, just go ahead and bolt this thing back. The gasket looked flawless. There was no damage in it at all. Uh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put that sealant on it. I think I may leave the gasket in place and put a thin layer. I was talking to the parts man uh, at the parts store about doing that, and he said that's what he would do. So I'm going to try that. All right, this is what uh, I bought to uh, do this thing. It's the Gear Oil the Gasket Maker. So... I did a test run, it went well, so you know how it goes. I will probably make a mess of this trying to uh, do it live. I got a pretty small opening here, I may have to make it bigger. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make it bigger. That's too, just too small. Let's go the next size up. It looks a little better. start here and just I want a small bead to go around and just a small little bead that's all she needs around that dial pin around that bolt hole all right got it on there we're gonna drop it down And got to finagle it into place here. There we got that part. Twist the input shaft, like it said. And let's see what we got here. There it goes down there. And grab this one. And there she goes and she's back together so now I'll take the bolts the instruction said run them down finger tight wait an hour and then torque them all right we're making progress we got the two halves back together got the shifter cleaned up got it back on there and um, what I want to do next I, I kind of wish I'd have held off on the shifter and run a little bit more uh, diesel fuel or brake cleaner. The, the second half, the bottom half, I didn't get quite as clean as the top. Uh, I, I got it pretty clean, but not quite as clean. So I thought about running something through it one more time uh, before uh, I put the gear oil in it. Anyway, this video went longer than I intended. I uh, probably repeated myself a lot like I usually do. So this is the transaxle. No more wobbly input shaft. Uh, it's nice and snug. Feels good. And uh, everything looks good. I'll uh, hopefully be ready to set this thing back in the tractor before too long.